Welcome to this lesson that is going to give you two different views of systems of linear equations. So first, I want to tell you a little bit about matrices. Um, a matrix is essentially a list of vectors. Okay, so for now, the way I want you to think about this is that if I uh, give you the vectors 1, 2, and the vectors negative 2, um, 6, you could arrange those into what's called a matrix, and it's kind of like a vector but with more columns, right? So the first column is this first vector, and the second column is this second vector. Of course, you could have a matrix that has more than two vectors in it. Um, we could have 1, 2, negative 2, 6, and 3, negative 1, and you'd write these into a matrix that looks like this. Okay, and the second thing which we haven't really gotten into much yet in this course is that uh, vectors and matrices can have more than two rows. I'll say more about this at the end of this screencast. But you can have a vector um, that looks like this, and a vector that looks like this, um, and you can arrange those into a matrix. It would look like this. Okay, so for now, matrices are just collections of vectors stuck together. Now I want to revisit the idea of a linear combination and show you how we can uh, represent a linear combination using a matrix notation. So you learned before that um, you know, linear combination means that if you have two vectors, I'll just make up two. Okay, you have two vectors. What linear combination means is doing something like multiplying each one by some constant and then you know, multiplying or adding them together. Okay, this is a linear combination of these two vectors. What you can do is express this linear combination using a matrix vector product. So the first thing you do is you construct a matrix that just has your two vectors in it, right? So 1, 2 is the first column, 3, negative 2 is the second column. Then next to it you write a vector and the vector contains the scalar multiples. So the first entry should be the scalar multiple that goes with the first column. Well, what goes with 1, 2? The scalar multiple 1 half. So we put 1 half up here. And then the second column is 3 minus 2. The scalar multiple there is negative 2. Okay, so this is called a matrix vector product. And the definition of this um, is simply that it means take this linear combination. 1 half times the first column plus negative 2 times the second column. Okay, if you want to do one more example, um, we can write something like negative uh, 1 times 1, 3, 4 plus negative um, 2 times 1, 1, 1 plus negative uh, 1 half times 1, 2, 1 uh, plus 3 times 2, 2, 1. And so if you wanted to write this as a matrix vector product, first you create your collection of vectors, 1, 3, 4, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 2, 1. And then we create our list of the scalar multiples. That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 1 half, and 3. And certain things have to match up, right? Like if you have four columns, that means you need four scalar multiples, otherwise this doesn't make sense. All right, so that's linear combination. Let's now think about systems of linear equations. And this is a topic which you've seen in high school mathematics, so we're gonna review how you probably thought about it then and introduce a new way of thinking about it. But here's the first view. This is sort of the traditional view that you're probably familiar with. Let's say we have a system of linear equations, x plus 2y equals 3, and 2x minus y equals negative 4. Um, the way you were probably thought to think about this geometrically is as the intersection of two lines, right? So you could take this first equation, and if you rewrite it in y equals mx plus b form, it turns into y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 halves. And then if you take the second one and you write it in y equals mx plus b form, you get y equals 2x plus 4. Um, and so what you were probably um, led to, to think to do is you plot these two lines. So the first one has a y-intercept of 3 halves. That's about here. And a slope of negative 1 half. 
That means the change in y is negative 1 for a change of 2 in x. So something like this. And you collect, collect, connect these lines. Okay, and then 2x plus 4 means you go up here to 4. Um, and the slope is 2. So if I go uh, left 1, I have to go down 2. Or if I go over 1, I have to go up 2, up to here. Um, and this this line looks something like this. Um, and I'm sure I didn't draw them perfectly, perfectly, but you could look for the intersection of these, or you could actually solve using algebra to find the solution. You could take the first uh, equation, multiply it by 2. You'd get 2x plus 4y equals 6. The second one is 2x minus y equals negative 4. I could decide to subtract that second equation from the first one. 2x minus 2x is 0. 4y minus negative y is 5y, and 6 minus negative 4 is 10, so y equals 2. If y equals 2, I can plug back into this equation. It'll say x plus 2 times 2 is 3, or x plus 4 is 3. That means x equals minus 1. So my solution should be somewhere near x equals negative 1, y equals 2. You can see that my picture isn't perfect. Uh, the real solutions so should be here, my plot is here, but that's the basic idea. This is what you were taught before. Let me show you another way to think about this. Okay, so we'll start with the same equations. x plus 2y equals 3, 2x minus y equals negative 4, and we'll use some linear algebra to write these in a different form, okay, but it'll still be the same equations. First thing is I'll take the left-hand sides and just arrange them in a vector, and I'll do the same thing to the right-hand sides, right? Like, we can do that. These two vectors being equal means that this top thing equals this top thing, this bottom thing equals this bottom thing. So it's still the same equations. Then I'm going to use what vector addition means to break up this left-hand side. So I'll write this as x, 2x, plus 2y, minus y, equals 3, minus 4. And then what I'll do is I'll use scalar multiplication to factor out an x and a y x2x is the same as x times 1, 2. 2y negative y is the same as y times 2, negative 1. And then the right-hand side's the same. So this is just another way of writing these same equations we started with, but it lends itself to a very different interpretation, because it's now about linear combination. What we're really asking is, what linear combination of 1, 2 and 2, minus 1 do we have to take to create the vector 3, minus 4? Right? What are these multipliers, the linear combination multiples, x and y? A geometric way to think about this is that I give you two vectors, 1, 2, and 2, minus 1. You want to figure out how many steps of each do you have to take to get to the location that we'll refer to as the target vector, 3, minus 4. In other words, you want to get right here. This is your target, right? We're going to start at the origin and ask how many steps of each of these things do you have to take. Now, for now, I'm just going to recall our solution from before. x equals minus 1, y equals 2, and show you that it works with this interpretation. And by the way, I realize I should have done one more step. I never actually got this into a matrix vector product. Once it's written as a linear combination, we can take our two vectors, arrange them in a matrix, right, and then ask what uh, coefficients x and y uh, will lead us to the vector 3 minus 4. So this is the matrix vector way to write this linear combination problem. x equals minus 1 means I start at the origin and take negative 1 step of 1, 2. That means 1 unit to the left, 2 units down, right? So I first go to here, okay? Then 2 steps of 2 minus 1 means I move over 2 and down 1 once, and then I move over 2 and down 1 another time, and lo and behold, I get to my target vector, right? So it's the exact same equations with the exact same solution, but a very different interpretation. The reason I'm giving you this interpretation is because, believe it or not, this is what will become relevant when we talk about curve fitting, okay? You shouldn't see that for now, so don't panic, but that's why we're doing this. Okay, this is an example, by the way, where the linear equations have exactly one solution. In this case, it's the solution x is minus 1, y equals 2. Let's do, let me show you another possibility with both interpretations. So here are two equations, x plus 2y equals 3, 2x plus 4y equals 8. 
What you can do is write them in y equals mx plus b form. First one is y is negative a half x plus three halves. Second one is y equals negative one half x plus two. Aha! These two lines have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. You might recall that lines that have the same slope are parallel. So I've actually drawn these two lines for you over here. This bottom one, this has a y-intercept of three halves. This top one, this has a y-intercept of two. Since parallel lines, um, they're, they're parallel from each other and they have space between them, so they'll never intersect, so there's never any solution, right? This is a case where there's no solution. Okay, let's take this same example and look at it in the alternative sort of target vector view. I've taken the same equations, but I'm going to write them in a linear combination form, okay? So x times 1, 2 plus y times 2, 4 equals 3, 8. Or to bring back our uh, matrix notation, we can also write this as the matrix 1, 2, 2, 4 times x, y equals 3, 8. The interpretation geometrically is I give you two vectors. I give you the vector 1, 2, that's this vector here, and I give you the vector 2, 4, 1, 2 over, 1, 2, 3, 4 up. That's this vector here, and I ask you to get to the vector 3, 8, okay? Um, that was a little bit of a poor choice for me because it's not on this graph, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, it's kind of up here. Okay, so you have to ask yourself, can you get there? You're only allowed to take steps of these two vectors. Well, these two vectors I gave you, they point in the exact same direction. One is just half of the other one. So you should be able to visualize that the only places you can get using those vectors are places along this line. Okay, your target is not along that line, you're not going to be able to get there. It doesn't matter how many steps you've taken along here, you're never going to get here. So this is no solution, just like on the previous slide, but it's a different geometric interpretation that lets you see it. Here's another case. Okay, so the final case we'll consider, um, it's not going to be one solution and it's not going to be zero solutions. So we'll start with x plus 2y equals 3 and negative 2x minus 4y equals negative 6. We can go ahead and rearrange these to write them both to be in y equals mx plus b form. We get y equals negative 1 half x plus 3 halves from the first equation, and oh, we get the exact same thing from the second equation. What does that mean I have to imagine? Well, this is the first line, and then you have to imagine drawing the second line directly on top of it. It's the same line because it's the same equation, and asking which points are on both lines? And the answer is, well, there's an infinite number. Any point you choose anywhere along this line in the entire xy plane will satisfy both equations. So this is an infinite number of solutions, right? There's all these different, it's not that you can choose any value of x and y, but any value of x and y that are, that's along this line, of which there are an infinite number of combinations, will satisfy the equations. That's the traditional view of this case. Let's look at the non-traditional view. It's like I gave you these two vectors to walk around the plane. 1 minus 2 is here, and 2 minus 4 is here. So let's see if I can draw this. There's the first one, and there's the second one, right? They're right on top of each other, okay? The place you're trying to get to is, let's see, down here, okay? So I'll try to draw that as a dashed line. Oh, what do you know? The place you're trying to get to is right along the same line as those first two vectors. So why are there an infinite number of solutions? Well, there's lots of different walking directions you could give, right? You could say, take three steps of this first vector and no steps of the second one, right? Here's one step, two steps, three steps, you get where you're going, okay? So one choice is x equals three. We didn't have to take any y's. Okay, but what's another choice? We could say take one and a half of the second vector, right? No x's, but this long vector here, let's do it once and let's do a half step of it. That also puts us here, right? x equals zero, y equals three halves. There's another answer. Um, we could say let's take a backward step of x, right? x equals negative one, that puts us up here. If x equals negative 1, well, let's see, I can go over 2, down 4, over 2, 
down four and I'm at my target. So that means I took two steps of the second one and got to my target. Okay, and in fact, there's an infinite number of ways we could play this game. You know, we could take two steps, two negative steps of x to end up up here, and then take four steps of y to get down here. There's an infinite number of combinations. So again, infinite solutions, just like on the previous slide, but it's a slightly different geometric interpretation. Now I just want to remind you that none of what we've done has to be specific to two dimensions, right? So we've mostly been working with vectors that have just two entries, and when you see those two entries, you should think, you know, these vectors live in a two-dimensional world. That's easy for you to visualize. A two-dimensional world is like a plane or like the, the top of your desk. Okay, but there's, there's no reason we have to restrict ourselves to that, right? So we could ask, um, you know, we could say we have the vector 1, 3, negative 2, and the vector uh, 2, 4, negative 1, and we could, you know, ask ourselves, is there some combination of those that we can take um, to reach the vector uh, 3, 7, uh, negative 3, okay? And in this case, the answer is yes. You take take one step of the first one and one step of the second one. I made that easy on purpose, okay? Um, so, but, so the question still absolutely makes sense. There's a target vector and you have other vectors that you can use to try to reach it. You ask what's the linear combination. If you wanna visualize this, you know, you see a three-dimensional vector, you should immediately think of a three-dimensional world. You can still visualize that. It's like a three-dimensional space, like the room you're in right now, right? Um, so, so this is not too hard to visualize. But part of the power of mathematics is that it can describe things even that are not easy for us to visualize. So it's perfectly reasonable to talk about the equation um, x times the vector 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, uh, plus y times the vector negative 1, negative 2, 3, negative 4, negative 5, uh, plus z times the vector 2, 4, 6, negative 1, negative 2, and ask if you can get to uh, 1, 2, 7, 8, 11. And we won't solve this now, but this is a perfectly reasonable question to ask. Even though these vectors have five elements in them, so you should be picturing a five-dimensional world, um, there's no uh, reason that you can't ask the same question. Can you take a linear combination of these three to reach this one, okay? Um, and I'll tell you right now, we'll, we'll talk a little more about this in future screencasts, but it's always the same possibilities, right? It's either you can't get there at all, um, there's exactly one way to get there, or there's an infinite number of ways to get there. So it's the same possibilities. Now let's wrap up just by uh, asking the following questions of ourselves. We should be able to explain what a matrix is, write linear combinations in matrix vector form, visualize systems of linear equations in these two different ways, the sort of traditional way you probably learned in high school, and then in this target vector way. You should be able to at least start discussing um, why systems of linear equations have zero, one, or infinite number of solutions, and your brain should not explode when we start to talk about vectors that have more than two or even more than three elements in them. And that's gonna be crucial when we finally get to curve fitting. All right, thanks for listening.